Good morning, and welcome back to the basement. So a while back, while I was working on the head alignment system for my round column mill, I found that I needed to cut a three and a half inch hole in steel that was two inches thick. Now, when you need to cut a hole in steel that's anything more than a quarter or three eighths of an inch thick, you don't have a lot of good options. Obviously, for anything up to an inch or an inch and a half even, you can just use a drill bit. And those will drill through four, five, six inches without any problem. But once you get above an inch and a half of hole diameter, then a problem sets in. How do I cut that hole? So the first thing I thought of is a hole saw. And hole saws are great in wood. Hole saws are adequate in metal. But in my experience, trying to hole saw through anything more than about a quarter inch thick was a real problem. But I hit on this one weird trick, and that's the subject of today's Shop Hacks video. One weird trick to allow you to cut large holes in thick steel with an ordinary hole saw. Now first, let's talk a little bit about what I mean when I say an ordinary hole saw. I have before me some common hole saws that you may come across. The first is this. This is a carbon steel hole saw. These things are dirt cheap. You can get a set of four or five hole saws for under $10. And all it is is a high carbon steel that's been shaped to the shape of a, of a saw blade and then pressed into this cup shape and then attached to a mandrel. This was my introduction to hole saws and I use this hole saw and ones like it all the time for drywall. That's about it. Maybe some very thin wood, but anything beyond that. And this carbon steel will very quickly dull. So when I say an ordinary hole saw, I don't mean one of these dirt cheap carbon steel hole saws. What I mean is one of these. This is a bimetal hole saw. This particular one is made by the Morse Company, which is a quality tool company made in USA. This one, I don't know. I ordered it off of Amazon. I forget who it's made by. This one is from Harbor Freight. It's Warrior brand. When I say an ordinary hole saw, I mean any of these. And their distinguishing factor is that they are bimetal hole saws. And the bimetal refers to the idea that this strip of metal on here, this is a strip of a, like a cobalt steel that has been laser fused to this regular spring steel. And then that whole piece has been turned into a circle and attached to the mandrel. So bimetal means it has a hard kind of a tool steel actual cutting edge attached to a more flexible body of the saw. And I'm somewhat brand agnostic. Now I think Project Farm covered these a while back and I'm not going to suggest that all hole saws are exactly the same. But what I am saying is using the method that I'm going to present today, the brand is really not that important. As long as you start with a bimetal hole saw, you can cut large holes in very thick metal. Now, why does a hole saw struggle to cut through thick material? Well, let's analyze a saw that hasn't been turned into a circle, a plain old cross-cut hand saw. So what's happening every time I move my arm forward? Well, these sharp teeth are snagging a little bit of the wood fibers, carrying them across the path of the cut and dumping them all right there on the table. There are almost no shavings over here on this side of the board. All the shavings have been carried forward in the gullet of the teeth. Each tooth took off a little bite, carried it through the groove of the saw cut, and dropped it right there on the table. Now what do you suppose would happen if I were to take this saw and push down here and start trying to cut. Well, I could create a bit of a groove with the saw, right? The teeth, each of the teeth 
would curl away a little bit of this wood substrate. But after I got to the depth of the teeth, I would stop making any progress because the saw would be embedded in a groove that is filled to the top with wood debris. The saw dust would not have left the cut. And that is exactly the problem that a hole saw faces. As soon as you get to the depth of the gullets of the teeth, the debris in the cut has the gap completely filled and the teeth are struggling to get to fresh material to be cut. Now, if you're using this aggressive saw going through a two by four, it will actually do the job. But you may have noticed like me, that by the time you get about an inch thick, it starts to smoke, it starts to bind, it starts to become pretty difficult to keep going through. You can press on and get through something like a two by four, but it's mostly because the material of the wood is so much softer than the steel of the saw. But when you take the saw and try to cut something that's incredibly durable, like solid steel, everything changes. So the trick I'm going to show you today is how to give yourself a place for your steel chips to go to get out of the groove of the cut. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Why are we wasting time talking about hole saws? Why don't you just get an annular cutter? And annular cutters are amazing, I'll grant you. And someday, if I become fabulously wealthy, I'll consider buying a set of annular cutters, especially ones up into the three, four, and five inch diameter. Because annular cutters are amazing at what they do, but they're incredibly expensive. But we can use the humble hole saw to achieve the same thing at pretty much the same speed as an annular cutter if you just know the trick. Now, you know, we're going to be drilling through nearly three quarters of an inch of steel. And I'm going to show you a little trick that makes a hole saw work a lot better. So first I will chuck up the hole saw and I need to go ahead and do a little cut so we can see the perimeter of the cut. The reason that an annular cutter is so much superior to a hole saw is because they have these flutes cut in this outer perimeter that clears the swarf out of the kerf of the cut. This is a saw that's in the shape of a circle. And so the saw dust, or in the, in the case of steel, the swarf gets lodged down in the cut. As soon as you've gone about an eighth of an inch deep, there's no place for the swarf to go. It sits there in the kerf dulls the blades, overheats the blades, and stops good progress. But what we can do using a simple drill bit is we can drill a hole that intersects the perimeter of the cut so that no matter what depth we're drilling at, there will be this channel that the swarf can flow out of. So for every revolution, any swarf that builds up, it will flow out of the kerf of the saw cut and into this hole and drop on out. And that will help the hole saw to cut faster, cooler, and more effectively. Obviously, you cannot exceed the depth of the cup of your hole saw, but up to that depth, I have drilled um, two inch plate steel using this method with a hole saw without any difficulty at all. And there's our hole and here is the plug that came out of it and you can see that clearance hole just makes a place as that swarf gets cut out it just drops into the clearance hole and just piled up this nice little pile of chips was all coming out of the clearance hole as I was cutting so there it is now you know the trick this is the plug from the day that I cut through two inch thick steel using a three inch hole saw. As you can see, the hole saw just walked its way right down through. Here's the hole saw in question. Most of the teeth are completely intact, perfectly sharp, 
ready to cut another hole. This particular one is the Harbor Freight brand, but like I say, the brand's really not that important. As long as it's a bimetal hole saw, you can use this trick and cut whatever size hole you want and steal up to the depth of the hole saw. And as always, thanks for watching.